In this video, we're going to start adding the classes we need to add traders to the game. I'll open up the solution. And the first step is to create a new trader class inside the engine models subdirectory. It's a fairly simple class. We have two properties, the name and the trader's inventory, which is an observable collection of game items. Since it's an observable collection, we need to have the using statement up here using system collections dot object model. We have a constructor here that takes in the name, sets the property and initializes the inventory to an empty observable collection. And then we've got two simple functions here to add an item to the trader's inventory and remove an item for when they sell it. Now that we have the trader class, we're going to create a new trader factory in the engine project and in the factories folder. And we're going to call that trader factory. This will have a private static read only list of traders underscore traders. And in this kind of construction like function for the first time that the trader factory gets called, this is where we're going to initialize some traders, add some items to their inventory, and then add the trader to the list. This is going through an add trader to list function down here on lines 33 through 41, where we check to see if the traders list already has a trader with that name. So each trader in this game right now has to have a unique name. If the list already has a trader with that name, it's going to throw an exception here saying there's already a trader with this name. Otherwise it's going to add the trader to the list. And then of course we have our static function here, get trader by name, where we look in the traders list, find the first one where the name matches and return that. Now that we have the ability to create the traders, we need to modify the location class so we can put traders at certain locations. So inside location.cs on line 19, we're adding this new public property trader here, and we can just get and set it. So for locations that have a trader, we're going to populate this. And if the location doesn't have a trader, we'll just leave it empty, leave it null. To populate the traders in the locations, we're going to modify the world factory class. And on line seven, we have our create world function. So we'll find the locations where we want to add a trader, like here, the farmer's house on line 17. And we're going to add a new line here where we say the world location at minus one, minus one, the farmer's house location. We're going to set the trader here property equal to, and then we're going to call the trader factory, get trader by name, and we're going to get the trader farmer Ted, which if we go back to our trader factory on line 17, this is where we create farmer Ted. We'll also do the same on lines 30 and 31. We're going to add Susan, as the trader for the trading shop. And then down here on lines 50 and 51, we're going to add Pete the herbalist as the trader for the herbalist hut. Now that we have our traders and we've populated them at certain locations, we're going to go into the game session class since that kind of manages our world. And in our game session class, we already have things like the current player, the current world, the current location, and now we're going to add on line 61 through 71, this current trader property. The current trader property has a backing variable of underscore current trader, which is up here on line 17. So on the setter for the current trader property, we'll set the value and we're going to raise a property changed event for the current trader property. And we're going to also raise a property changed event for a new has trader property that we're going to create. And this has trader property is down here on line 89. And all this does is it checks to see if current trader is not null. And we're going to use this has trader as a way to hide and show our trade button. Now that we have all the changes to the game session class, we'll go into main window.xaml. And we'll look at the buttons in line that started line 254. 
we're going to add a new button inside our direction buttons. And this is one's going to be for the trade. It's going to be at grid row one and grid column one. The visibility is going to be determined by that has trader property we just created. So the button is only visible if the location does have a trader. And then the content is going to be trade. And this is where our farmer trader lives. So we see the trade button shows up here. And if we move away to our home, there is no trader there. So there's no trade button. And it looks like it all works. If you have any questions about this, please uh, leave a comment below or I'll have a link to the support page and you can leave a comment on the website and I'll try to answer you as soon as possible. Thanks.